Hi, uh, I'm Brian Thompson from the HP Hybrid Cloud business, and I'm joined today here by David Estes, who's our Vice President of Engineering. And uh, David, I wanted to take this opportunity. Um, obviously, there's been a ton of excitement since we announced HPE's VM Essentials as a, a, a virtualization platform, giving enterprises an alternative solution that they can use to run their VM workloads. We announced that last year, we launched the offering itself in December, and there's been a lot of uh, excitement and adoption around this. But one of the things that comes up in a lot of customer conversations and where we see folks uh, adopting this is helping them get from A to B. How do we help them uh, migrating those uh, virtual machines from uh, what might be their legacy platform and into their new VME environment? And uh, it was a great opportunity. I wanted to uh, see if I could have you help give us a little bit of a preview to the work that you and the team have been doing in that area. How do we think about migration tools uh, to help customers along that journey native to the VME platform and solution? Thanks, Brian. Yeah, this is a big topic right now, especially with new customers coming onto the platform. And they've been asking, how do I move my workloads, basically, onto the VM Essentials platform? And uh, I've got a preview uh, we can show right here. So I've got my VM Essentials here. Um, we've got some VMs. I've got some sample VMs for you, right? I've got some mixed on my HVM cluster, right? I've got some also in my VMware in this case. So there's a new tool under Tools called Migrations. And this is a preview, it's coming soon. So we're gonna go hit add and create a migration plan. So what's really cool about a migration plan is you can create a set of VMs you wanna move in that migration plan and it will allow you to group things together. Uh, maybe you wanna figure out dependencies, maybe you have certain workloads you need to move before you move the others. You can actually build multiple migration plans in doing this. So let's just make a, a migration plan for those two VMs. So I'm gonna pick the source cloud and then I'm gonna pick my target cloud, right? I'm gonna move it to here, and there's my group. So we're gonna hit next. These are clouds that, that you're managing today with this, right? With the right. Morpheus orchestration is you can connect to multiple different clusters, if you will, or, or treat them as separate clouds. So you're seeing VM workloads in your source cloud, and you're actually identifying those as part of this migration plan that you're gonna move into your target cloud. Exactly. So we're constantly doing discovery of all the clouds you add to the VME manager, VM Essentials manager, as well as if you're doing a full Morpheus stack with everything as well. So uh, you can see all your clouds here. We've got DE Rocky 5 and DE Ubuntu 2. You can multi-select these. So I'm going to actually select both of these for this migration plan. And then we're going to hit next. Now, the next thing that's uh, really nice is it actually allows you to map your resources, right? So this is the network, the source network and the source data store. Where do I want them to go, right? This is my target network I've got set up in this environment and my target data store. So once I have those set up, remember you can have more than one of these. In the case of this demo, we're keeping it simple, but you can have as many as are available or listed based on what you've selected um, on the servers. And then we get a nice review, uh, just to kind of view all the things you've added here. And we're gonna hit complete and we get this awesome detail page here. Can't wait to show you that. All right. so. This is our demo migration plan. You can see it's in a pending status. You can see all the details, the source, the destination. There's your progress. Currently they're in pending, right? There's no destinations yet in all your mappings. We so you haven't actually kicked off the migration yet. You've established the plan, which right. identified your source virtual machines from that source cloud, your target uh, cloud that you're moving them to. You identified the networks that you want them to move into, the storage, uh, targets you want to move into. So you're staged and ready. You're ready to actually now kick off this uh, migration, right? Yeah, and this is a little different than what people have been doing in VM Essentials today, where they've been importing images, doing a conversion, then um, sending them or provisioning VMDKs directly in VM Essentials as an example. This actually kicks off a hypervisor to hypervisor transfer and conversion. It's actually going directly from ESXi, for example, in this case, to your HVM host. So we're gonna hit run here and kick this off. So, you know, first we wanna make sure we wanna run this, right? Um, one thing to mention is you are gonna have downtime during this process, um, but it does do its best to minimize that. It's not gonna shut down your workloads until it's ready to do that. So first it's gonna kick off. You can see both of these got kicked into pre-check, right? So they are running more than one at a time. Um, and you can see here, DE Rocky 5 and DE 1 2 have migration histories and they're running their pre-check. And then they're gonna run a prepare source workload. And what that's gonna do is it's actually um, going to basically take your VMs or your running workloads and make sure the QMU guest tools is on there. You could optionally uninstall VMware tools. 
Uh, make sure the VertIO storage drivers are there for Windows, things like that are gonna be running in this prepare source workload phase. So you might be answer answering that question then is, obviously this works with both Linux and Windows instances. Uh, if it's gonna do that kind of sysprep in, in that uh, installing those guest tools. Correct, exactly. That's great. And you know, there's some other things asked to do too for various Linux distributions, right? So like CentOS and Rocky, you have to re-prep the bootloader, for example. The sky's the limit here because it's, it's actually stubbed out to where we can add custom things here as well. So we'll be able to basically easily adapt to operating systems across the various Linux distributions or whatever you might have in the future as it grows. But in your example, this is actually removing that complexity of traditionally I would have to export from cluster A, do some image conversion, perhaps double my storage while I do that conversion, then stuff it into cluster B, rehydrate that, do all that prep. This is now taking that whole workflow and automating it, right? It's recognizing based on the guest OS requirements, it's installing the right guest tools, it's managing all that migration for you without requiring that manual or uh, heavy intervention, if you will. Exactly. Um, as, as a matter of fact, we're actually here in this DE Ubuntu 2. You know, it actually moves a little faster on Ubuntu than Rocky. You can see it's already transferring data. Ah, interesting. Yeah, so it, what, what it's actually done here is it's created a target VM already um, on the cloud, and it's basically empty. And then what it's doing behind the scenes is it's actually doing a streaming conversion from ESXi directly to your VM workload in the hypervisor. So you get a direct transfer. And while it's transferring, you get a conversion. So you don't need double the space. So it's a huge space savings when you're doing large VMs, things like that. So we're really excited about this technology we've been adding into the product. But you did mention, obviously I need to stop that running VM while I do this migration process. So right. it's a live migration in that context, right? But I think that's expected, right? I'm actually converting to a different format. I'm coming up on a different hypervisor altogether. But uh, through that automation, you're minimizing that actual downtime, right? Exactly, exactly. As a matter of fact, if I go back and look at my inventory of VMs, I'll already see the new target resource that's been created. And I'll also see that the other one's probably in a stop state. Since we're in a data transfer, it's gonna shut those down. Um, there are cases where you might wanna leave them online. For example, maybe it's a stateless workload where you're not worried about any data lake or anything in there and you just need it to run for as long as possible you will have the option to do that as well. So you want that VM to just stay online, like I say, it's a stateless web server and then seamlessly transition to the other one. You have the ability to do that as well. So you have both options. You know, and one of the things while we wait as it's transferring the data, you and I had talked about this is David, so if you think about more complex environment migrations, leveraging that concept of the migration plan, I can create multiple plans. So I might have a sequencing of different types of workloads, right? Those first tranches of workloads that I migrate over that are prerequisites before I can bring in that next wave. So having that ability to create separate migration plans and execute them independently or sequentially helps with those more larger or more complex environments. Exactly. Um, we actually just finished. Um, oh. so I'm actually gonna close up here, but you can actually see we've got our source um, VMs here, right? And our destinations. And those are gonna start kicking on and running their pre-checks and finalize here in a second. Um, you can't actually force them, but it, it's, it's actually just doing some final prep on Rocky 5 here. Yeah. Uh, once that's done, you're uh, up and running and you've got both VMs. You can see the destinations even map the IP addresses from the source of the destination, which is really handy, right? So you're gonna have those here as well when they start up. Uh, that's great. So actually, if you go back to your source, you see those the Rocky and the um, the Ubuntu host that you moved from, the, in this case, ESXi, uh, a vSphere cluster, and then on your destination, you saw them on the VME platform, but it preserved, it took the network, the host name, it was appended based on the naming convention that you'd put in, here's my migrated version. Um, mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yep. So, um, that's actually the, the bulk of the migration. So it's operational and it's now kicking those workloads on. So that's kind of a preview of where we're going with this. We're gonna be adding more capabilities and options. Uh, for example, I know that one request we've seen is, can I control how many VMs it's doing at once? Yes, you're gonna be able to set bandwidth limits and things like that as well for the transfer. So you'll be able to set, sure. I wanna do it in batches um, or actually set your bandwidth transfer limits as well. David, this is great. Thanks for taking the time to uh, give us this preview uh, and showcase what, what's coming soon. Um, I think this is a great value for customers and providing that capability to help them 
uh, in this journey as they embrace and, and start to migrate their workloads onto and really leverage the power of, of VM Essentials in this new platform. So thank you again. This is great. Thank you.